Now we also need to acknowledge that different people can have different lifestyle leadership styles. Different leadership styles are needed in different situations. So while we've been focusing on leadership skills building through skills building through actions a potential leader can take, it must also be recognized that leaders do and should as suggested on the previous slide that leadership is situational, apply different leadership styles in different situations. Many people have described various leadership styles. Daniel Goleman is a proponent of applying emotional intelligence to literature, which we're going to discuss in the next slide. He has six characteristics of leadership styles with respect to their immediate and longer term or overall impact on an environment. Adding the dimension of emotional intelligence should enable someone with strong leadership skills to make informed choices about when to apply certain leadership styles. These leadership styles, their appropriate situation, and their overall impact include coercive, that is, do what I tell you for immediate compliance in a crisis, but which has an overall negative impact. Authoritative, come with me, may help mobilize others to achieve a new vision and actually has the most strongly positive overall impact. Affiliative, people come first, can be used to resolve rifts in a healthcare team and has a positive overall impact. Democratic, what do you think, helps build buy-in and also has a positive overall impact. Pay setting, do as I do now, can be used to get quick results in a competent team, though has an overall negative impact. And coaching, try this, helps employees improve performance and generally has an overall positive impact. Perhaps the most surprising of these, at least to me, is the authoritative style having a positive impact overall. But I think exercising one's authority in a way that lets people know they are part of what the authority figure is doing, come with me, suggests less of a demand and more of a joining invitational approach. So when might a leader use a leadership style with a potentially negative overall impact? Probably in a situation where the leader has already demonstrated strong leadership skills and gained trust from those they are leading, but needs to affect action in an unusually critical, time-constrained situation. I referred to emotional intelligence in the last discussion. So let's take a look at how emotional intelligence aids leadership. This concept of emotional intelligence being able to help leadership is becoming recognized is very important. It is observed that business leaders need to be able to read each other's signals as well as understand their own strengths and weaknesses. Emotional intelligence may be defined as the ability to recognize and understand emotions in yourself and others and your ability to use this awareness to manage your behavior and relationships. It's interesting to note that many clinicians in general and physicians in particular often work hard not to let their emotions show or even surface to their own self-consciousness. This is a coping mechanism for them as they can face so much fear, sadness, grief, anger, and other emotions in their patients and family members. Clinicians need to be strong for their patients, but we are learning that the willingness to share emotions may be a powerful way to help patients and their families. Increasingly, we are also finding that physicians are being advised to admit errors rather than to hide them as in the past, especially in light of our litigious society. 
showing emotion and admitting to errors, recognize that providers are human and fallible. Such admissions seem to go a long way to actually avoiding a lawsuit and certainly aiding in leadership. Key qualities that foster emotional intelligence are self-awareness, including self-assessment and self-confidence, self-management with self-control, trustworthiness, conscientiousness, adaptability, achievement orientation, and initiative. Social awareness, including empathy and organizational awareness, and social skills, encompassing development of other skills, service orientation, influence, communication, change catalyst, conflict management, building bonds, and teamwork. The study cited here conducted at Johnson & Johnson, which is an American multinational medical device, manu uh, pharmaceutical, and consumer packaged goods manufacturing company founded in 1886 and is one of Fortune Magazine's most admired companies for 2017, is noteworthy, not only for its incorporating in emotional intelligence in its standards of leadership, but for its attention to identifying what they call potential leaders, not already high performing leaders, as well as variations in emotional intelligence by gender, regional differences, and functional differences. This is a worthy read to incorporate concepts of diversity in leadership skills building. So this concludes our second lecture in Unit 2. And as always, the references listed here were used in compiling this lecture. Several of the articles include self-tests and additional tips for building leadership skills you may want to reference in the future. And finally, don't forget to take the assessment for this unit, and I welcome you to respond to the optional activity as well.